Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. If you're new to Art and Talk, welcome. Art and Talk is all about meeting artists and being inspired. We aim to dive into the heart and mind of each artist's guest to gain a wider perspective and deeper insight into their art and their artistic voice, their journey, and their message. So thank you so much for being with us. If you've been watching Art and Talk for a while, thank you for your continued support. We certainly appreciate it. So today we are continuing to bring you another artist from the Art Acquisitions exhibit that is currently on view at the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. The Art Acquisitions exhibit spans across multiple art mediums and it opens a conversation for artists and collectors to assess, define, and question their appreciation for art. So our artist today is a painter and she has a very unique style and an interesting interpretation of reality and how she executes her vision in her beautiful paintings. And we'll be looking at a select group of them. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Terry Pesso. Hi, Terry, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, Terry, well, we're delighted to have you here. So I wonder if we can open up the show, Terry, with moving from being a mom to exploring a creative outlet and then ending up in painting, doing this beautiful painting with a unique style, winning numerous awards and showing your art in many different group exhibits. So take us on this journey of you raising your children, you want a creative outlet, you want, you, you found painting. Let us in on, on how all this developed. Um, okay, so I was a stay-at-home mom in my uh, early 30s and I was looking for um, something that I could do part-time that was creative. Um, I had gone to college, but I never majored in art. Um, I had taken some art classes, but at the time when I was a student, most people were saying, oh, don't be an artist. You're never gonna make any money being an artist. And um, so I didn't major in art and I ended up going into health sciences and went into all the sciences. So. Uh, the way that I found art was really in a, not a very direct way. So I always had a passion for um, art. I mean, my mother never gave me a paintbrush, but I was into my crayons and my um, any kind of uh, creative, uh, you know, in those days we, we painted on black velvet or we did paint by number or it was my mother would just bring home all these things to do craft wise and creative wise, but never really painted. So um, in my 30s, um, I, I thought that maybe it was going to be graphic design. So I took a few design classes at some colleges um, for adult education. And I just happened to take a design class and the instructor said, you know, you really have a sense of color and design and you should really try to paint, to take a painting class. And um, I thought it was a really good suggestion because at the time, Graphic design was really in, into uh, computers and I am not a computer person. I'm not technology savvy. So um, I ended up taking some design classes and um, I took a watercolor class uh, from a fellow artist um, at her home studio and a kind of a light bulb went off and I just knew that that, that was gonna be it for me. And from there on, I have to say all through my children growing up, I, I was painting prolifically. Really just as soon as they went on the bus, as soon as I did my errand, as soon as I could, I, I, I got out the paints and I started taking lots of classes and um, my passion grew. <clears throat> and that's kind of how it started. Mm -hmm. So you really immersed yourself once you said as that light bulb went off and you kind of knew this trajectory that you wanted to uh, set um, yourself up on with, with painting and, and exploring this and, and uh, developing and whatnot, then you were just immersed. I was immersed. So I just, um, I was really into um, 
painting florals and still life. And I had many, many wonderful instructors. And, you know, I would take away from each instructor whatever I could. Um, and I developed my own style. I never was uh, one for copying or uh, doing exactly like they said. I would experiment and try different things and different techniques. And from watercolors, I branched into um, an instructor that uh, taught me how to use pastels. And then for quite a few years, I used pastels and then I learned how to do oils and I would do um, plein air painting. I would go out and paint landscapes. Um, any chance I had, I would go out into working from life, which is really the best way to learn. And um, I did that for quite a while also. <laughs> So I really have, um, it, it was a passion. I would go into New York City all the time, go to different gallery shows, uh, see what was happening at all the museums. And um, just, I was non-stoppable, really. <laughs> and you touch upon, Terry, your unique decorative style, how you interpret reality, how you want to express it and, and what's important to you. And it's obvious you use this, you know, great use of color and also with texture and composition. Talk to us about developing this, this unique style, this unique vision that you have as an artist. Um, I really feel that everybody has their own unique style. Like I couldn't paint like you and you can't paint like me. And I feel that a lot of that is just an innate ability. And I think that everybody has that creative ability within themselves if they just didn't get tied into making a perfect piece of art. And, you know, once I got into education and teaching children art, it was, you know, you see how free children are in the very beginning where they really don't care um, if it's exactly representational. And um, I think that, you know, by third and fourth grade, then it really starts to tighten up. And I, I found that a lot of people would just um, not enjoy the process, but were really concerned with the end result. Like, oh, am I finished? Is it finished? Um, is, you know, this perfect line, perfect that. And I guess I'm lucky that I was always experimenting and I just was enjoying the process. And I really wanted other mothers and women going through the stress of raising kids. I mean, I almost ended up teaching a class just to let the juices flow, like get into your Zen, just like yoga. That's what painting was for me. It was my go-to place where I could just escape the stress of raising small kids. And my husband wasn't around. He worked very long hours and it just helped me to free up and to be in the moment. And I guess it's just came out like that style. It wasn't like, you know, you, you look at other painters and either you like really representational or you like abstract or you're drawn to these colors or you're not drawn to those colors. I think it's all just within each person that makes you unique. And I think that that, I was always into color. I was always a colorist. I took many classes to learn how to blend colors and, and and I, but I was always um, experimenting and never really could put me in a box. I mean, I learned perspective, I learned um, the values, but then you, you have to learn the basics, but from there you can push it. So. So after you learn all the ABCs, you were open enough, it's what it sounds like, free enough within yourself to say, this is what I want to create without restriction, without judgment, without having a definitive definition, so to speak, of, of what art is. You, you wanted this to be, this has to be Terry, and this is what's right for me. And you, and you stuck to that unique voice. Yes, I mean, it's not easy because, um, you know, I would take many classes, like a figure painting class, and, you know, I would could come out in tears thinking like, I, I'm just, I can't paint, I can't get the portrait like this person. I can't paint perfectly like that. And I think that creative people are constantly judging themselves, saying that you have to uh, paint this way or paint that way. And um, you let other people's uh, maybe judgment affect what you end up doing. But I think um, ultimately um, your inner voice has to hold true to yourself and you have to just 
follow with what feels right for you. And it, it does take many, many years of um, studying. And I, I don't think that you can just jump in, expect to have masterpieces. I mean, it took years of developing and working and just following your passion. And I, I, I think that I, I know which, um, you know, artists really inspired me like M Matisse and Picasso and Bonnard. I mean, I always loved color and I loved more of an abstract feel to representation. Like my, my pieces will, you'll know that it's a dog or a flower or a, a table, but it's not necessarily in the right perspective or the right, um, you know, it, it's not gonna look like a photograph. Let's put it that way. Like if I'm more expressive. So I would say I was an expressive artist. And I love in your bio, Terry, where you say that what's important to you, in addition to what we're speaking of now, is to capture the essence of your subject and doing that through color and through texture and in your unique style. So that seems to be uh, prominent in, in your awareness and your skill and in, in your artistic expression to capture that spirit as you see it and then convey that spirit. Uh, yes. And, um, you know, when I started to paint, um, there was no social media. So that is a really big difference, I feel, today um, versus the way, I mean, how it is for artists today versus how it was when I first learned to paint. Because now you have so much at your fingertips with YouTube and um, Instagram, and you're constantly looking at other people's processes and also um, their techniques and styles, and you're constantly comparing yourself to other people. But at the time, um, you know, you just went to a gallery, you showed them your work, and if they liked it, um, they they took you on, and you know, and that's kind of how you did it. You, you entered shows, and you either accepted or you weren't. And it wasn't this. Um, I mean, I feel in some ways it's just all that judgment is really tough on artists today, and the process is much more complicated. But on the other hand, it connects you to a world of other artists like in Europe and um, or the Middle East or all over the world uh, that you can exchange with other artists and see their techniques and their styles. And I feel that um, you just have to be open to always bringing new things into your art. So uh, in the past few years, I've gotten way more into mixed media and bringing in collage and bringing in more texture instead of like with pastels, it was more about the color and watercolor, uh, the dripping of the water, but mixed media and um, is more into texture and bringing in collage helps you get that into the painting. And also it can bring an abstract uh, feel into it and um, it just brings different interests. So that's what I'm experimenting with now. So, you know, who knows what the next two years will bring, I could be, experimenting with other techniques, but I, I'm, I'm open to developing at all times my, my skill. Mm -hmm. So staying in that, that open space and just letting in whatever wants to come in and what wants to come out is what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's key. I, I think if you get too closed off, um, you know, you just, you know, and you'll see some people, they just paint the same thing over and over again. And I, I, I'm not really sure, um, you know, maybe that's their comfort zone um, and maybe that's how it works. But I think to grow as an artist, um, you constantly have to be challenging yourself and trying new things. Yes, and I appreciate you sharing that because that, that's a really important element uh, for an artist and perhaps even a, a non-artist, just, you know, going about life and, and growing and evolving to have that openness. And as you were saying to, um, you know, meet, meet challenges and, and, op and be open to it as well. And I appreciate you also sharing, Terry, about, you know, the kind of the pros and cons about, you know, technology and living in the world today as an artist and, and kind of giving us your perspective on that. Right. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look at some of your images. Give me just a moment and we'll pull the first one up. Okay. It's a little, little mini video clip. 
Okay, right now it looks a little blurry on my screen. Um, it's not moving. Can, can you see it now? Yeah, but it's blurry. <clears throat> All right. Oh, now I lost it. That's okay. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to some of your JPEG photos. Okay. Art, and let's go with that. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, do you want to ask me something about it, or would you like me to talk about it? Oh, um, yeah. So if you can elaborate on that, um, absolutely. Okay. Um, so this is a mixed media piece. Um, it's an interior, which I uh, often love to paint interiors. Um, I utilized um, collage, as you can see in the flowers and the vase. Um, uh, that was, um, some of it is painted paper that I create myself. And some of it is um, just um, from magazine cutouts and patterns um, that, the black and white, which I thought um, accentuated the color of the background. So a lot of this is very intuitive when I work. Um, I, I might start looking at a bowl of fruit on my table. Um, I might have a photograph of someone's uh, kitchen table that I found interesting. Um, I it might start with a, a vessel, like that yellow vase uh, or pitcher. And from there, um, you know, I start with the basic out, you know, I start to sketch in uh, certain elements. And then from there, it's just all intuitive. And I kind of add piece by piece in this particular piece. I might have started, uh, well, I definitely started with the table and the door and the colors. And then I just built up sort of like a sculpture. You, you kind of just build it up. You know, piece by piece, you do one little piece of collage and and then you look, um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, hello, I'm sorry. Um, so you build up the, the piece of art like a sculpture. And one piece influences the next piece, just like with paint, one color influences the next color that you put down. So. This is so beautiful, Terry, and I love how you're sharing your process with us. So a lot of it is, as you were saying, is intuitive, but yet you begin with, as you said, it could be a pitcher, it could be a bowl of fruit, it could be um, something that inspired you from a photograph or, or perhaps a magazine. And then you just sort of, what I'm getting, and, and let me know if this is correct, Terry, then you just sort of allow it to develop. Yes. I allow it to develop and it just, that's what I mean, where you get in the zone. Once the, the piecework is laid out and many artists have different ways that they start a painting, um, but a lot of it is just freeing up your, um, I don't know, like greasing your, your, getting your juices flowing and you just get into it and you just, it just develops. And um, that's how this painting, um, developed for me and a lot of it is you know could be your imagination but a lot of that also you know it's not as simple as it seems because you know it all gets down into the color and the value and everything has to complement whatever the next step is you understand like if, you know if I put that orange uh, uh, orange on the table and then you know do I want the picture am I going to keep it yellow or do I want to make it green or you know and every color affects the other color uh, so that determines my my decision making and this piece right now is at the brick in um, Boca the Boca Raton um, Innovation Campus it's showing there with the Palm Beach Watercolor Society and it got an honorable mention wonderful wonderful <laughs> and that show yeah, congratulations with that. Thank you. So I'm wondering, Terry, so we now have a good feel for your process, your decision making, how you think about it, but yet you open to that whole creative intuitive flow. Um, when you set out to paint something, first of all, we know that you beautifully just sort of get into that zone. You just really are very easily into the moment without any type of hesitation or restriction or 
or, or too many obstacles. But now when you know you're going to paint, um, do you do any sketch work? Um, how much of it is impromptu, spontaneous? Do you wake up in the morning and say, you know what, that object that is in your home, let's just say, for example, for some reason it's been catching your eye, then for a couple of days, do you say, okay, I'm going to paint that and maybe incorporate, you know, something else and then just let it happen? How much is strategizing, thinking it through as a preliminary stage, and then and then how much of it is just sort of birthed in the moment? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, I often work in a sketchbook um, that I have, which is um, like a, a smaller format where I can cultivate ideas. Um, so lots of times um, I might look back in my sketchbook, which I have all different kinds of things. And I might say, you know, I really like how that came out and I'm going to try to do that in a bigger format. So like the sketchbook could be like a nine by 12, let's say. And I, I'll often use my, um, my acrylics or my watercolors in there. And then um, from there, I'll say like, oh, I, I really like the idea that I had in this sketchbook. And then I'll try to implement it on the canvas in a bigger format. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, or sometimes um, I, might, um, like, I might set this up as a still life in my house. Like, as I said, I might have these flowers or this bowl of fruit that's been hanging around that starts to get my juices flowing. And I might take out a tablecloth with pattern and uh, set it up, put some light on it, see some shadows. And then, then you just, you start to, to uh, develop the painting. Yes, yes, great. That was a fantastic um, elaboration. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here we have the next one. Uh, so this is another example that I have big bowl of fruit. Um, I don't believe the bowl was blue. <laughs> I just think that I was into uh, working with this palette at this time, which was a Prussian blue. And I loved the contrast. And I had the um, orchids in my house that were blooming. <laughs> and um, I always have fruit around. And I just... Um, you know, I, I started to sketch it out and was just, you know, caught, you know, I, I don't know. I, I could just say that it just developed that I, I set out the bowl, I had the orchid and then the choice of color. And I, I'm very influenced by uh, Cezanne who used to really outline his fruit with a lot of black. Um, sometimes I get into using a lot of line work to emphasize the color and make it pop more. Um, and in this particular painting, I, I felt that the black really helped bring out, um, I think before I started the green of the flower in the orchids, I started out with a very dark blackish, greenish, bluish, and then I worked back to the lighter colors. And um, that's how I developed this painting. <laughs> and I see strong influence of Matisse and Cezanne. Actually, when we first looked at this, I was like, Cezanne. So I thought that was wonderful that you mentioned that was you know, one of your inspirations um, as, as an artist. Yes, he, he is. And a lot of my interiors you'll, you'll see are very influenced by Matisse also, who's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. You tap into such um, a very rich and fertile imagination and, and sense of creativity and um, you know, your use of color and in your composition. Um, any words of advice to any painters that are watching to you know, really tap into that inner aspect of, of creativity and bringing that out, whether they're a painter or a musician, a, a dancer and whatnot? Um, well, I think it still gets into, um, Knowing, knowing your colors and knowing um, and pr really practicing. I mean, I, I really can't speak to a creative who's a dancer, but with, with art, I know that, you know, I think you have to experiment with your colors and your palette and um, see what works for you. And, and many 
times I work with colors, um, you know, you, you start with the blue, then, you know, you add a little yellow, you add a little white, see what that comes out to. Then you start with the blue again, but you add a little red and then you add um, more white. And then that's gonna give you a different tone and a different value. And it's just, you know, it's like, you'll look at my palette and you'll see what, well, you know, you set out your paints and then you slowly just create all these marvelous colors. And I just feel, um, but you don't want too much color. I mean, it's really a balance. So you don't wanna use every color in your, um, in your repertoire. You wanna keep your palette limited to the point where it doesn't get too noisy the painting doesn't get too busy, uh, which I'm guilty of. Many times I could get carried away with color, but I think um, in this particular painting, I did limit my palette so that you could really see uh, the blue and the white really brings out the contrast of all the pieces and it, it just came together. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this also uh, harkens back to your use of um, being um, a strong experimenter. You're just really experimenting, seeing what happens and kind of tying this back to when we first opened the um, interview is not getting so caught up in the final result, but really staying in that present moment, experimenting, see what's happening, um, being observant about what's going on, making these thoughtful decisions. Like you're saying, there are certain boundaries in, in terms of what you just elaborated on in terms of the color, but also having you know, an expressive, um, creative, um, visual aspect going on as well. So it's really kind of balancing all these different aspects out. Yes, and there's lots of rules in, in, in developing a composition and what makes a good composition and what doesn't. So I say like, you know, it's intuitive, but also I've had years of studying um, composition and constantly looking at other pieces of art. I think you constantly have to be <clears throat> like stimulated and see what makes a good painting. And sometimes you might have to um, tweak it, meaning like, you know, I, I didn't have, um, like, let's say I didn't have that lemon in that painting on the left side, lower left-hand side, I, I, but I felt like that left-hand side needed something else. So like you might've had the bowl of fruit and you had the orchid, but that wasn't interesting enough. You had to add some other vessels in there and other shapes to make it more interesting. And same thing with the landscape. I mean, you don't want too much in there and or it gets to be, you know, what's your focus? What's your vocal point? You know, you wanna just uh, work with all these different elements when you're creating a painting. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that, Terry. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Um, this is another mixed media piece. Um, this is inspired by three pots that are sitting on my windowsill, which was, um, I have three daughters, <laughs> Erica, Rachel, and Sarah. And each one of these pots actually um, was given to me as a gift from my mother-in-law, who was also like a, an artist. She was an artist in her, and but with little, um, like a country artist. So these, each of these little, pots had my daughter's name on it. I didn't put my daughter's name on the on the pots because I thought that would be a distraction. But I did get into, they, that inspired that this painting because I have the interior um, shelf there that the pots are on, but then you have the exterior landscape that you could see out the window. So since moving to Florida, I'm very inspired with the landscape and the florals outside the window and then the inner landscape inside the window. So it's actually combining an interior with an exterior, which Bonard, one of my favorite artists did a lot. You would see paintings where you look out the window and you see the landscape, but then you see the dining room table on the inside. So, you know, it's, an interior exterior type of painting. And I used a lot of, um, if you notice in the background, um, there's lots of painted papers. I, lots of times I use vintage books and vintage papers, um, even music books, or I have musical notes, they might have the writing. And then I paint on those papers and I use stencils and I make different patterns. And then I can 
uh, put implement those into the painting by um, there's a process of how you attach them to the canvas. And so in the background there, you'll see um, painted papers and some stencil work where to develop the pattern of the leaves and the landscape outside the window. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Down at the bottom mm -hmm. is where the musical notes uh, was an, a vintage uh, music book that I found. And I used those uh, to show the show at the bottom. <laughs> And Terry, can you share with us roughly the, the size of these paintings that we're looking at? Um, this painting is um, an 18 by 24 inch. It's, it's not that big. Um, the other painting I think that we showed was 36 by 36. I don't have a huge studio um, with a lot of storage space. So I'm not working on five feet uh, paintings at this time, even though I would love to uh, one day do that. Uh, but I have, as it is, a storage full of so many things. After painting for over 30 years, you, you just have a lot of stuff. And um, so right now, I, I don't work enormously big. Mm -hmm. And I also so. notice with your signature, Terry, it's always interesting to see how an artist signs, um, you use both your first and last name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, because if I just use Peso, then I thought, well, you know, I'm not a Picasso. I mean, there could be other Pesos. How are they going to know it's Terry Peso? So, um, in fact, you know, I don't know. There's, I don't know why I started like that, but I, I started that from the very beginning and I've just maintained both names. <laughs> And I love the incorporation with your children and, and these planters and then um, you're expounding upon um, also your, your process, which is really giving us a lot of insight, Terry, into in, how you approach the canvas and what's important to you um, in terms of the artistic elements and the subject matter and how you think about it. And also, you know, going back to also that intuitive flow as well. Yes, because, you know, the window pane is at, in my house that I took this from is white. <laughs> so of course you see, I, I made it blue. <laughs> so that was just a gut kind of thing and uh, a gut decision. And I like the way it came out. Uh, the, shell, the, the, the shelf that pots are on is, are, is not red. So you make a lot of um, choices when you make a painting and I don't stick to what's in front of me all the time, <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, the little blue dots at the bottom, I wanted to bring some of the background into the foreground, which is another concept of, uh, of composition. So um, that's what I did. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful paintings, Terry. Thank you. I'm wondering if we can move a little bit up to speed. You, are, you touched upon some of your current, current work is incorporating some collage and some mixed media. Now, are you kind of sticking with um, the interiors and kind of still life theme or, you know, like with the last one we looked at an interior, exterior combined? What's, what's going on with, with your new projects? You know, I don't know if I could ever keep myself into doing just one thing. Um, I'm, I really love to paint the landscape, but since moving to Florida, I, I'm really not attracted to, I like the florals and stuff, but it's not like I feel if I'm in Vermont where I have the fields and the grasses and the mountains or North Carolina. So uh, if I was living in North Carolina, I'd probably be doing more landscape since I always love doing landscape. But since getting into mixed media, I really do like, um, I really like experimenting with collage papers and seeing where that takes me. Um, for a couple of years when I moved here, I, to I tried total abstraction with total non-representation at all. And I ended up doing that for a couple of years, but then I decided that that really wasn't fulfilling me in the same way as something that's sort of representational. So I don't know if I'll ever go back to total abstraction, but I think that I like to leave myself open uh, for any kind of series that's going to come up. I, I used to do a lot of uh, dog paintings. I had black labs and I used to do commissions. And of course they were expressive dogs. They were not 
photographic, but I just, you know, got the essence of the dog and I might put apples in the background if that's what he'd love to eat or little flowers and just make it very um, whimsical. So um, I've been thinking, oh, you know, everyone loved my dog paintings. Maybe I'll paint more dogs. I don't know. I, I'm at the point in my life where I don't feel the pressure of having to uh, create for anybody but myself. So um, I enter shows with things that I'm currently doing, but it's um, I don't always stick to the one thing. So it'll always be flowers, interiors, dogs, outside, you know. You can paint a refrigerator and make it beautiful. It doesn't matter. It's the process and it's the enjoyment and the release of the stress of everyday life and what this world is going through. I, I feel so, so fortunate that I have um, found painting in my life. You know, and I really wish everybody would experiment and learn to be uh, creative because it really helps with the stress of this world. And just to not, you can't think about anything else when you're painting. Just like, as I said, you get into that Zen place and it's just fabulous. No, I love that. And I love those um, word choices that you were um, using in terms of the, the enjoyment and, and being in the moment and, and the release. Those, those are such beautiful words and such a beautiful space to go into and then create. Yes. And, um, that's all I can say to uh, anyone listening to me now, now is that just let yourself be free and try to experiment and enjoy the process. Not necessarily everything is not going to be a masterpiece and they don't all turn out that you can show everybody, say, oh, look what I did and post it on Instagram. I mean, there's going to be plenty of stuff that's just pure crap, but it's just getting into that studio or wherever you have to create and just starting with, you know, it could be with anything, markers, collage, paint, just get your juices flowing. And before you know it, you know, you're in a zone. Yes, yes. That's such great advice. I, I so appreciate all, all that you've been sharing with us, you know, to really Thanks. get into that space of the process, the process, the process, and, and not the result and be in that space of, of enjoyment and creativity and openness and, and seeing, um, you know, what will happen. Right. Yes. And that's the key. Yes. As we move into closing the show, Terry, um, we always like our guests to provide the closing comments. So if there's anything else you, you would like to tap us into about your art and your journey, and if you could let us know how to stay connected with you. Um, well, you can, I'm, I do post on Instagram at tpeso at Instagram. And um, lots of times it might be things from my sketchbook, things that are really just turning me on at the moment. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I, I post my paintings and I could always be reached there. Um, I am involved with Women in the Visual Arts, which is an organization in Palm Beach County and the Color Society in Palm Beach County. And they're just, wonderful women that are all creatives and um and i'm really lucky to have found that network of other artists here unfortunately old school square which was in delray has closed which is where i first started when i moved to florida taking some classes and now that that building has closed so um i like taking uh painting classes not so much to uh, well, I think you can always learn something. Even after 30 years, I can learn, still learn things from other artists. And I just think it's stimulating to be around other creatives in any way that you can to, um, to connect socially and to create together. And so I try to, to, I'm, you know, looking forward to doing more workshops once we get back to, you know, uh, non zoom things anymore and just in the real world, because it's been a real um, struggle to not have um, in person classes for me like the zoom just it's it's not the same as being in a class with the materials and really meeting other people and you know painting. Um, it, it's a very isolating thing also so you're you're by yourself a lot, so I think that you need to get it with other people that have the same interests, which is good. 
Yes, yes. I so appreciate all that you shared. And it, yes, a painting is really a, a solo, typically activity and really kind of diving into that, that space, you know, within. So it's, it's great as you were um, suggesting, Terry, to really get out there and, and to interact and connect with other creatives and really kind of vibe off that energy and, and that whole interaction. That's why the show was so great. It was such an exciting night to be in this most beautiful space at the Cultural Council and to meet all these other creative yeah. people. And it was such an exciting thing to be in that show. And I, I look forward to many, many more wonderful shows in Palm Beach County. And I, I just think it's wonderful that um, art can live here. And I, I hope it continues. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Terry, for being our guest. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and much success with all your endeavors that you're um, creating and that you will be creating. And of course, with the um, current exhibit at the Cultural Council, um, the art acquisitions. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you everyone for watching Art and Talk today. This does conclude our final artist interview from the series that we've been bringing you these past couple weeks of the artists from the Art Acquisitions Exhibit at the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County. We'd just like to thank all the artists that have come on board from the Art Acquisitions Exhibit. It's been an amazing honor to connect with you and share your art as it is all the guests that come on Art and Talk. We wish you much success with your artistic endeavors and of course in your personal life and stay in touch with us. We'd like to know what our uh, prior guest artists are up to and of course um, share what they're doing on our Facebook page. A huge thank you to the Cultural Council as well. Thank you so much. And just a little heads up on our Facebook page on Art and Talk. We still have a post on the art acquisitions and there's two links uh, that you can take a look at. One is an actual video of the exhibition space of the art acquisition so you can kind of get a feel for what the exhibition space looks at if you're not local to South Florida and there's also the link to the cultural council and you can jump on that and you can find all the um, artists that have participated in the art acquisitions and get a little bit more information as well we'll keep that up on our Facebook page for a little bit longer all right so thank you again for watching and as always we'll talk soon on the next art and talk until then be well and be blessed